Hey guys, how's it going? Just thought I'd take a couple of minutes here and do a quick video on the convergence here. A video entitled, What I've Learned After 60 Days of Flying This Wild Thing. Um, if you have just received yours in the mail and um, you've been on RC groups and you see it's well over 300 pages on this, uh, I'm going to quickly go through and summarize a couple things here that you want to do before you go out for that maiden. Um, first of all, obviously you know this, it's a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, which means for takeoff and landing, you're going to be flying basically a multi-rotor tricopter, uh, very similar to a quad or helicopter. If you don't have any experience on that, go out and buy yourself a little $40, $50 quad. This one's a little more than that, but uh, there's plenty out there for $30, $40. Um, just to give you some stick time working with the rudder, the yaw control, moving the nose of the aircraft around because a lot of guys I know have been flying fixed wing aircraft for years and they just, um, you know, yank and bank them. Uh, no rudder at all. They're just using uh, basically all aileron and elevator and f flying that way. Um, it's not going to work on this aircraft. Uh, when you need to take off and land, even in stability mode, you're going to want to have some experience yawn the aircraft around. So if you spend a little money on some little guy like this and if you can get to the point where you can hover in, nose in toward you, turn around, do the same thing, do a few figure eights, then you're going to be ready to go out and take on the convergence here. Um, let me uh, talk briefly about batteries on this. Um, a lot of people, including myself, had some trouble flying this aircraft and getting into the LVC, the low voltage cutoff. Um, and what that is, is when you're flying along, no matter what mode you're in, if the flight controller senses that your battery voltage is dropping too far, approximately 10.5 volts, um, it's going to go into a low voltage cutoff mode, uh, which is going to put it in the tricopter mode and stability mode, and you need to get your aircraft on the ground quick at that point in time. And you're going to spend probably 30 seconds on your radio thinking, what's going on? Is somebody on my channel? What's going on here? Who's flying my aircraft? And it's going to also puzzle you because you're going to put in a battery that you've been flying without any trouble on your fixed wing aircraft. And it's not going to make any sense. Why am I in low voltage cutoff mode? These batteries work great on my brand new uh, E-Flight Razorback. What's going on? Um, this flight controller is trying to take care of you. And what's happening is we've got three motors here that are running pretty high RPM, pulling approximately 10 amps a piece. Um, so it's really quite a bit of draw on a little three cell battery. Um, and what's happening is we're experiencing something called voltage lag which we don't really notice on most of our airplanes because we don't have flight controllers on them. So quickly what's happening is a lot of batteries will drop from that 12.6 volt down to 10.5 or even lower real quick when you're in the multi-rotor mode because even though you're just hovering around um, you're pulling a lot of amps and you haven't even gotten the airplane mode yet, uh, which by the way pulls less amps because we're only using two motors, the rear motor cuts off and um, when you're flying around in airplane mode uh, you're only pulling two-thirds the amps and, um, and it's really in that transition phase that you're pulling most of your amps. So um, if you've got a pack that's not puffed up and it's new and it says 30C or something, it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have this thing called voltage lag. And what's going to happen is until you get something like a watt meter um, and hook up some type of battery tester so that you can see what's happening with each individual cell and your total voltage, um, you're not going to really know how the battery is performing just because it's new doesn't really mean that much. And I'm going to just simply demonstrate that quickly for you here. Um, grab this camera. This little device here is nothing more than a battery discharger, but it actually does it at 30 amps, about 300 watts. So it literally 
is pulling out of a battery exactly the same thing that the convergence does when it's flying around um, in its tricopter mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up this meter we can see right now that this battery is at storage at 3.8 per cell this is eh, right around where we store our batteries at and we'll go ahead and hook up this little watt meter so I'm now pulling 27 amps out of here you'll notice this battery voltage is already dropped down to 9.87 let's look at this battery voltage is already down to 10.07 each individual cell this is already going to send this convergence into low voltage cutoff and look at this this is you can't get a better pack than this um, so keep in mind because a pack let me do and just connect this And incidentally, these are great batteries. Um, I have no problem with these batteries whatsoever, but just because uh, they're in great shape, they charge all the way up, balance charge all the way up to 12.6, this battery right here is looks fantastic and it flies terrific in all my other planes. But in here we're going to have trouble. So be aware of that. Um, you really want to know what your packs do under load okay you want to know what's happening to your packs when you're pulling 30 amps out of them approximately 300 watts if you don't have any type of setup um, you can simply do the same thing by just plugging in your battery meter here to your battery and plugging it into one of your warbirds that runs on three cells safely stand behind it and run the power up to your pulling about uh, three quarter full power and watch this at 30 seconds and 60 seconds see where your voltage drops down to anything under 10.5 is going to be a problem all right um, something else I learned is that uh, it's real confusing on these when you plug them in and the motors go down and then they come back up before it's ready to fly and you may have noticed that they do not come back up vertical right at 90 degrees. They're not completely perpendicular with the fuselage. Um, and that's pretty confusing to a lot of guys. Um, there needs to be some type of offset on here to counter the yaw that occurs on this aircraft in multi-rotor mode. And so that's why they are both not completely vertical here. And out of the box they're going to do what they're supposed to do. The flight controller will also do uh, what it needs to do. I've made marks, I don't know if you can see this, but I've made marks on my servo horns and on the fuselage nacelle here. Um, I've made little marks where these go when I am in the multi-rotor mode after I turn it on. Because if I break one of these or I need to replace one, it's going to make it real easy to line them back up again. Um, so making little marks on here um, just for reference certainly is going to help out because if these break or fall off you're going to have, have a heck of a time replacing the parts and getting these exactly where they were out of the box. Um, these rods measure 50 millimeters um, on their adjustment from the ball to the Z-Bend um, and that's pretty much how they come out of the box. Um, talk a little bit at, about the trim here, um, when you uh, fly this aircraft, you're probably going to notice, as I did and most people, that once you leave multi-rotor mode and you get into the airplane mode, you may notice that the nose drops down a little bit. And that is perfectly normal. And you will also notice that when you transition to that airplane mode, you're going to have a lot of flutter. Um, there's some oscillation that occurs on this aircraft and I think it has a lot to do with several things um, but it's not anything that you're going to be able to fix it says in the manual that it's normal just to make sure that you are transitioning up high 
make sure that you can see the aircraft and you're oriented with it when you transition because it goes quick and it gets out of sight fast when you transition to that airplane mode. So be ready for it. Um, I will tell you that when you take the stability off, you really notice the nose drop down when you transition to the airplane mode. And it's going to scare a lot of guys. Um, and you're going to want to start trimming the heck out of your radio. But I will tell you, when you land this aircraft, you want to get your trims back to zero on your radio. And you want to do all of your trimming mechanically. Okay? I actually trim these out mechanically. I turned each one of these out 360 degrees, one full turn to bring my elevons, my elevators up, one full turn. That made it so that when I transitioned to airplane mode and took the stability off, I was not having to keep my uh, keep pulling some back pressure on the elevator. So it's flying pretty straight when I made that adjustment. And now all my trims are back to zero. Your sub trims, your digital trims should all be at zero for this aircraft. The reason is, is the flight controller in here is not a friend of digital trims. It is going to fight that um, the whole way through. So you don't want any digital trims in here. Um, mechanical is the way to go on that. Incidentally, um, I have flown this aircraft with the battery all the way forward, all the way back, and in the middle. On stability mode, it doesn't really make much difference. But when you take it off stability, um, I want to fly my battery all the way back to keep my nose from coming down. It feels a little nose heavy to me when I've got stability off and I'm in that airplane mode. And um, so you can experiment around, but when you start taking the stability off, I think you're going to find that you're going to want your battery as back as far as possible. That's what I found out. Um, Always, please, dear God, always make sure these prop adapters are tight. I had this one come off in flight when I was transitioning to airplane mode. And what had happened is this thing's oscillating like they all do. And then it got the airplane mode. And then I just saw it start to roll in. And what was happening is this had come off. I had all this adverse y'all because this was the only power source and it was just coming over. And you know, believe it or not, you don't have that much deflection here on these elevons. I gave it full opposite and I couldn't even straighten it out. It was going in and it was rolling over. At the last minute I transitioned to multi-rotor mode and it just sort of spiraled in um, and landed no damage. So make sure these are tight. If you want to use um, a little bit of thread lock on it, be very careful because you don't want to get that on any plastic parts. Um, but I check these every flight now. Make sure these are tight because um, there's a lot of vibration and there's a lot of oscillation going on with some transitions. Now this particular one, I've flown a few at the field. And this one is a bit of a box of chocolates, and that is when I transition back from airplane mode to multi-rotor mode, it's got this tendency to pop its nose up about 20 or 30 degrees, and in stability mode, I can't get it down. I'm pretty much stuck there. I transition back to airplane mode, come around, do it again. It's perfect. Um, now I'm pretty much flying this aircraft with stability off completely. Um, everybody, you're going to get to that point. Um, the only time you're going to use it might be for just taking off, and I've had less issue with that. This seems to only be a problem when stability is on. So um, I'm still playing with that. Um, another thing is you have a place here to put your uh, video transmitter. Um, one guy at the field lost his, just popped off. So lay yourself a piece of tape over there. Um, mine wasn't coming loose, but if this pops off and you fly to a field like mine where there's a ton of tall grass and weeds, you're never going to find this. So I've got a little bit of tape on there, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not having that problem. There were a few people early on that had stated that they had problems with this rear boom coming a little loose. I did put just a little bit of glue around here, but honestly, 
I have not had any issue. Um, I've checked everything and everything has remained pretty tight on this aircraft um, with the exception of the prop adapters. That's the only thing that I have on here that comes loose after about four or five flights. So I check these after each flight. Um, I think that is some of the main things that I have learned on this. I am now flying this aircraft with these type of batteries pushed all the way back and I am only flying for about five minutes coming in and I've got about 40% left on my battery with that. Um, I have had this airplane come in on the low voltage cutoff and as long as you understand what that is you're not going to panic, you're going to come in and just land it. Um, it's no different than landing it with stability on in the multi-rotor mode because that's really all it is. So um, you've got at least a minute, so don't feel like if you're high up or that far out, don't panic, just bring it in and get her down. Um, the only other issues I've had with this um, is the little bugs I've had with the switching. Um, some guys have put their switching to on a three position switch so that they have they have stability mode only in the multi-rotor and then as soon as they transition to airplane mode uh, stability is off. It's not a bad idea but I will tell you that there have been times that um, it has saved me uh, in, in, a, in a situation where I've had to turn stability back on um, without transitioning, keep it in an airplane mode. Um, but here's the problem. The manual has the recommended two position switches to be used on your radio where you transition on the right side to multi-rotor mode and to airplane mode. Now to me that was a little confusing because I've always done all my gear up, gear down landing on the left side here. So what I did is I just assigned that switch over here. So basically when my gear was up, that was the same thing as being in airplane mode. I put my motors down. Gear down, that was the same thing as going to multi-rotor mode for landing. I didn't have to think about switch position. I just automatically was going here for takeoff and landings. Um, I've always done my dual rates and high rates on this side of the radio. So for me, having stability on and off, I just use this switch over here. So that being said, I haven't had any problems with the switching here. But I will tell you that if you are flying around and you hit the wrong switch, thinking that you're transitioning to multi-rotor mode but you've actually hit the wrong switch and you've transitioned to stability off it's going to knock your socks off because it's a whole different flying experience when you take stability off the first time so be extremely careful if you have a radio that has custom voice commands use it um, turn the volume up so that you have a audible reference to what you're hitting because um, I've worked with a couple guys at the field and when you're flying the aircraft, sometimes you think you're hitting the right switch and you don't. So be careful. And if you've been flying fixed wing aircraft a long time and you've always had your gear switch on the left side, which is pretty much a standard, you may want to consider putting your, um, your, your mode for multi-rotor and airplane mode on that side as well. Um, that way you don't run in any trouble. It definitely helped me out a lot. So, um, those are the main things. I would say that if you make sure that uh, your battery is secure and move it back um, in the battery bay, make sure these are always tight. Um, check for any looseness back here. Uh, some guys had trouble here and needed some glue. I didn't really, but um, that was just one thing that I did for preventative maintenance. Um, I would say that you're going to be okay flying this when you take off. Um, get a little time in on a little small quadcopter. It will certainly help you out tremendously. Um, and it's, it's really a fun aircraft to fly. Uh, even though it's not perfect, it sure is a lot of fun. So, any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching.